Ukrainians are determined to never live in a closed authoritarian system again. To achieve victory, they are actually targeting Russian energy infrastructure inside the country. This is stated in the Forbes article. The publication recalls that in late August, Russia sent a wave of drones to Ukraine attacking its energy infrastructure. Last night, Ukraine struck a power plant in Moscow with drones as well as oil depots and refineries. According to the author, Ukraine carried out these strikes to end the war and Putin's rule. Ukraine has options now because it was successful in the initial phase of this invasion, said Nico Lang, a senior fellow in the Transatlantic Defense Program at the Center for European Policy Analysis. According to media reports, Russia's oil and gas revenues amounted to $219 billion in 2020. Together, these two sectors account for 60% of Russia's exports and 40% of the federal budget. So how will this war end? Ukrainian President Zelensky believes his country must escalate to de-escalate, a tactic that includes seizing Russian land and seizing critical Russian energy assets. Putin, however, believes he can win a war of attrition. But at what cost? The longer it goes on, the poorer Russia becomes and the more toothless it looks. It could empower the people and topple the dictator. The publication concludes, According to analysts, attack on Russian energy facilities could have significant consequences for the Russians. According to the experts, from a strike by Ukrainian UAVs on Russian state district power plants and oil refineries in Moscow, it will literally burn. Recall on September the 1st, Ukraine hit a power plant in Moscow with drones. It is also striking oil depots and refineries. Ukrainian attacks on fuel storage facilities and electric substations are retaliatory, aiming to give Russians a taste of their own medicine. Russia's electricity network is already fragile and needs modern technologies to increase resiliency. These attacks, combined with the vulnerability of their electricity network, are expected to cause significant suffering for the Russian people this winter, possibly even more than the hardships experienced by the Ukrainian people. The most compelling question is whether the Russian dictatorship will survive. If Russia loses, dissatisfaction among the public and political elites could increase. Continued economic sanctions and military losses may further strain Russia, potentially creating an opportunity for political opposition or factions within the government to challenge Putin's leadership. Hundreds of thousands of homes have been left without power in Australia and thousands of Victorians have made calls for assistance as storms caused chaos across the state. There was widespread damage in the states of Victoria and Tasmania, while a 63-year-old woman was killed after a tree fell on a cabin at a holiday park on the border between Victoria and New South Wales, emergency services said. It's a sad and tragic set of circumstances for the woman's family and my thoughts and sympathy go out to her and the emergency services who responded to that incident, Victoria Premier Jacinta Allen told a news conference. Public transport commuters were also affected by the storms, with power outages and debris on the tracks, resulting in the Sandringham line being almost completely shut down and major delays reported on the Frankston, Pakenham and Cranbourne lines, according to Sky News Australia. The southern island state of Tasmania has also been hit by wild weather, with thousands left without power. We've seen another wild night of weather across the state with extensive destruction, Mick Lowe, executive director of Tasmania State Emergency Services, told a news conference. Extreme weather events are common for many Australians. Most coastal areas saw high tides, even as residents were advised to avoid these areas due to dangerous waves and flooding. The latest storms follow unseasonably warm winter temperatures in Sydney. Australia's frequent extreme weather is exacerbated by climate change, with rising temperatures contributing to more intense storms, wildfires, and floods.